Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. We want to welcome everybody tonight here at our Wednesday night Bible study here, Shallow Baptist Church in Port Norris. Truly, I'm excited about what God is going to do this evening. We're delighted to have you with us. We pray right now that you would take the time to sit down, grab your tablets, grab your phone. Uh, you can meet us on YouTube. We're Facebook Live right now. We have an exciting word for you. And I'm so glad to be in your home with you this evening. I believe and know without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord have a word just for you. My name is Pastor Gary Mack. I'm one of the associate pastors here down here at Shiloh Baptist Church, Port Norris, and Vaughan, one church in two locations, where our senior pastor is the Reverend Dr. James Allen Duncan. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, I am excited tonight because I do have a word that I believe is going to bless your soul. And the title of my class tonight is called One Accord, United with Christ We Stand. Can I say that again? One Accord, United with Christ We Stand. Before I go into it, I would like to open with a word of prayer. But I do want to take this time out to say thank you to uh, my pastor for allowing me the opportunity to share with you. It's truly an honor and a privilege. And also to my church family, we lost an angel here at Charlotte Baptist Church. Uh, our own deaconess, Donna Bard, which is our pastor's sister, him and the first lady, and mom Duncans. We send a special prayer out to you, to Gilbert Bard Jr. We want to take the time out to say, we pray and intercede on your behalf. Our condol our deepest condolence and sincerity is with you tonight. We know it's rough, but we pray that God would give the family strength to make it through. If you don't mind, let's all bow. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to stand before your people and to proclaim your good news to your people. Lord, we know we're living in the last days and times are rough. Lord, we're so glad that we have a Savior in you. And Lord, we take this opportunity right now as we stand together in unity. As we talk about being on one accord, Lord, we stand in unity with our pastor and his family and Mother Duncans and Gilbert Jr. and all of the entire family. We know there's many others that lost their loved ones. We pray and we intercede for you as well. We pray that God will comfort you in your hour of need. And he would give you strength beyond measure to be able to take one more step. So, Lord, right now, cover them right now with your precious blood. And, Lord, if they're listening, let them know they have loved ones, family, and friends that are standing in the gap for them right now. Because they have stood in the gap for so many of us. So, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise and honor. And, Lord, I know that your word is going to resurrect our spirit. To give us the joy we've been looking for. And the peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we glorify you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to go right into the word. Once again, the title of the class is called One Accord. One Accord. United with Christ we stand. Now, you notice I didn't say united with the world. I said united with Christ. Because what is going on in the world today we need to stop playing and fooling around, thinking we have all these other resources that can bring us the joy that we know only Christ can do. We know for God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son. God gave, God gave. Exercising the oneness right there. He gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I don't know about y'all, but I am truly grateful that he sent his son, a savior, just for me. One accord, one accord. We talk about one accord, we preach about it, we teach on it. But the question I have tonight is, do we really know what being on one accord truly means? 
Because as believers and as we minister and live before babes in Christ and even mature Christians, sometimes we don't set a great example of what one accord means. Especially when we see the vision in the house of God. We see it on our jobs. We see it everywhere we go. And there's Christians and believers spread abroad all, out, all throughout the world, all over this land. But one thing we can see clearly, we can clearly see how the enemy can, can unite his people together, how they can get on one accord and they can actually make a change and difference. That shouldn't be, not in this world, because we are the light of the world. We're the salt of this earth. And we haven't lost our savor or flavor. We have everything packaged up in the anointing that God has given us through his son that we should be able to accomplish everything we set our mind to do. The world shouldn't be running to the other world people. They're supposed to be running to us. But we need to take a self-analysis of ourselves. We need to do an evaluation, a self-evaluation of who we are and who we represent. And we need to make it known, not only to the world, but to our, to our children. Our children sometimes don't even know who we are because they see one servant, they see one father, they see one taskmaster telling them what to do without any love or any grace. I know we struggle in that area. I struggle in that area. And I needed help. And I found out through the Word of God, through learning about being on one accord, that God has the answers that we need to be able to survive, to be able to go that next step and be able to make a difference be a man or a woman of influence that can make a change in somebody's life. I don't know about y'all. I want to change. I want, I want to see change. I really do. It's a shame to be going to church as much as we have and sitting under good teaching as much as we have and, 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 and reading our word and studying and praying and, and fasting and interceding and to stand before the Lord and just for the Lord to say he don't even know us. Depart from me. You work is of iniquity. You had your own plan. You didn't go by my plan. Wouldn't that be a shame? I, I, I want to get it right. And I found out the only way that we can get it right is through the word of God. Can I get an amen? Got my wife here. Say amen, baby. Amen. All right, y'all here? <laughs> a quick example. A lot of times when we go to teaching the word of God, explaining the word of God, we don't use any relevant examples that people can relate, that they understand. Sometimes we talk over the head because if they weren't brought up in church, if they weren't brought up in church, sometimes they don't see things the way church folks see them. But I just want to throw, for those who listen, our family, my shallow Baptist family, I want to give you a quick, quick example just to tickle, tickle your, uh, your senses to get you, get you where you might be sleeping. I want to wake you up right now. Do you remember? Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's, I, I wasn't even here, but I walked into this when I joined Shallow Baptist Church. Do you remember, this is a perfect example of being on one accord. And then I'm going to let you know the, for the next three weeks what we're going to be talking about. We're going to go right into it. Matter of fact, I'm going to do it now. The three things we're going to be talking about, three topics for the three weeks that I had. I had three weeks of Bible study. The, tonight we're going to be talking about the power of the oneness of Christ. The power that comes with being on one accord with Christ. United with Christ we stand. The risen Savior, the anointed one, the one who died for you, the one who shed his precious blood. That's the Christ I'm talking about. United with him. Meaning that Christ already did everything he was expected to do on the cross. His finished work. We're supposed to accept his finished work. We're supposed to live by it. We're supposed to be an example of his finished work. Because what he did, he actually done it for all of us. And it gave us access back to the Father because of the plan he had laid out and the plan he carried out. So the first thing that tonight we're going to be talking about, the power of the oneness. The power that comes with being on one accord. Next week we're going to be talking about the purpose of being on one accord. What is our purpose? What is the reason why we should be on one accord? Our purpose. And then our last week, I'm so excited about the last week, because it talks about the benefits. Oh, you can play with me if you want to. Everybody wants the benefits 
I want some good insurance. I want some extra money I can get. I want anything that the Lord got for me. If I can get it, I want it. You call me selfish that you want to. Everybody wants something. There's some benefits. There's some rewards that come with being on one accord. Back to my story. A, a quick example, something relevant that you can relate to, that is a perfect example of being on one accord. This very building that I'm standing in right now, remember I told you, we're one church in two locations, but I'm standing in our Port Norris location. But before this church was built, there was dirt here. There was dirt. This very building I'm teaching, there was dirt here. And being on one accord, the Lord gave our pastor, the senior pastor, the under shepherd to God and the shepherd of flock, gave him a vision. Showed that we need to build a bigger edifice because guess what? There's souls coming. Him and God, listening to the word of God, God spoke to him through the word, through his son. There's a connection. The Bible, uh, John chapter 1, it said, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, where it became flesh and dwelt among him. We know the word represents Jesus Christ. So God spoke through his son, through his word, the pastor. And he grabbed the vision. He grabbed the dream. He grabbed the plan. And what he had to do, he had to present the plan. Once he accepted it, he had to present the plan to the congregation. You follow me? So you, you, you share the dream. You bring it before, you bring the vision, you lay it out, you make it plain. And then it's up to the congregation or the members whether they want to accept it or not. Like I said, I wasn't here, but I did hear some didn't believe, some did. Some got on one accord. What message, what, what direction am I going here? Everybody don't have to be on one accord for you to accomplish what God called you to do. The Bible says where there's two or three gathered together in his name, he said he will be in the midst. I don't know about y'all, but I'm so glad. I don't have to get 110% of people on my side for God to give me the okay or the victory that I need to be able to accomplish what he has set out for me to do. If I need healing, I don't need everybody in the house to say, you want to be, I just need one or two to know the power and the blessing that comes with trusting God's word, depending on God's word, standing on his word, knowing that he can make a way out of nowhere. Yes, when the tears are falling down your face, the word of God will send peace. I don't know about y'all, but you ever had peace? I'm talking about peace that just passes all understanding. You got the worst news that you possibly can get. But sometimes through that day, you find yourself smiling and laughing or listening to a song or waving your hand or giving God thanks when the world was crying and saying, woe is me. That's peace. That's the peace of God. So not only did pastor had to lay out the vision that God gave him, the church, the congregation had to receive. Talk about oneness. Oneness. They had to accept the plan. They had to accept what was laid before the vision. They accepted the vision. They touched and agreed. They marched around this property. And God opened up. I, I can go into detail, but I don't have time to go into detail. I just want to give you an example. You can't sit here and say as a believer that you have never witnessed the oneness of God and how the power of unity and intercessory prayer and being on a one accord and touching the grain and trusting on something and then God revealed it right before your face. The devil can't reveal things like God can. The devil might reveal, reveal some things, but it's called division, separation, anger, and even death. But God said, I come that you might have life and that life more abundantly. That abundant life, the blessing that passes all understanding. Something we can't reason in our mind. I just want to give you a little taste. United with Christ, we stand. I said, not with the world. We stand in solidarity with Christ. His finished work, we stand in solidarity with. Like I said Sunday you know, when I was preaching, if I was Christ, I think I would have chosen another plan to redeem man back to God. I'm sorry. Y'all better be glad I ain't him. Because I would, I would have found another way. I said, oh, can I, can I cross over to the, the, the Red Sea again or have Moses cross over the Red Sea? Can I, can I turn wood into wine or something like that? Can I, can I do something like that? I don't want to die of this horrible death. But Jesus Christ knew before he even accepted. Because him, Jesus Christ, 
and God are one. And you're going to see it here in my foundation scripture was coming up. The foundation scripture here, or my supporting scripture that I had, is found in St. John. Yes, I have the word of God. Remember, the word of God is the only thing going to change. I can stand up here talking blue in the face, but my words would not bring comfort like the word of God can. St. John, chapter 17. This is my final scripture. This is what leads up and cover this whole title of being on one accord. In order to know what being on one accord is, you need to find somebody who can set the perfect example, something you can model after, you can pattern after, something you can grab onto. You can always go back and check and cross-reference it, and you'll find that no fault in this. You'll see the pure unity and oneness as Christ, as God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are operating in oneness. So in this scripture here, St. John chapter 17, verse 11 is my foundation. It's what we want to build on. And it reads, St. John 17 and 11. It says, I am no longer in this world. Yet, they are still in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, the name which has you have given me, so that let me see, so they that they may be one, just as we have. I'm read that again. I am no longer in the world, yet they are still here in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name the name which you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are one. If you look at verse 1 in the same chapter, chapter 17, verse 1, Jesus is called the high priest here. And being called the high priest, there's, there's many definitions of the high priest, Old Testament, New Testament, but Jesus Christ is called the high priest here, meaning the intercessor on behalf of others. He was, he was interceding for us. He was the one that had access to the Father. Uh, and in, in, in the Holy Holies, you know, in, in the Old Testament, you had the priest that can go before it. They can get to access to be able to get to the Holy Holies. But Jesus Christ is our high priest. He is our intercessor. The, the one that had a relationship because they were one. The one that they had that he can go and represent. And he was Jesus praying. And this prayer was like no other prayer. It was not like the prayer in Gethsemane, the Garden of Gethsemane, where he was praying and sweating like blood in agony. And, and, but he said, Lord, um, if you will, if it's possible, take this cup from me, because he knew he, had, he was suffering. You know, we, we talk, that comes a little later. But Jesus was praying and asking his Father. In verse 1, he said, glorify me. It shows the posture Jesus didn't have his head down. He was looking up to his father. And he was saying, Father, glorify thy son. That, that, that thy son might glorify you. Honor me, Father, so I may honor you. So I may reverence you. So I may praise you. So I may worship you. Well, what am I saying? Jesus Christ knew the task, the heavy bag burden he had to, to carry on the cross. He knew the direction he was going. That was his form of praise. So I come to tell you, the listeners out there, sometimes when you're going through suffering, if you're suffering for righteousness, meaning that you're not weeping as if you have no hope, when we lose a loved one, yes, we we yes, we hurt. Yes, we, we're, we're, we're torn apart. But we have a Savior on the inside of us. And his name is Jesus. And it's the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus was praying to his Father, what he was saying is, I'm coming, I'm coming home. In, in verse 11, he said, I, I am no longer in this world. Yet, the listeners, those are the ones accepting and following me, the ones I have chosen, the ones you have given me, God, I've kept all of them. I've kept every one of them except the son of perdition. Meaning, you know who that was? Judas. The Bible called Judas a devil from the beginning. I know somebody said, well, where are you going with this, Pastor? I need you to hear where the oneness began. It began with the Father and the Son. They were on one accord. They were in agreement. They were in step. They were in tune. How can two walk together unless they agree? They were walking in step. They were in solidarity one with another. 
And or Jesus, I remember Jesus at, at, at the tomb of Lazarus. When Jesus got there, they were praying, Lord, don't go. You know, he said, if I go too early, I won't even let Lazarus die. I'm paraphrasing here. But he went so he could be glorified, so people could see the power that he possessed. That what he said would come to pass. He said, let him sleep. Everybody knew he was dead. Mary wanted to come to him. Master, you should have been here. He said, don't worry about it. Where is he? Because he was even in oneness with them. He cared. He cried with them. He felt their compassion. They lost their brother. They lost somebody that was close to them. But Jesus knew. He knew the path that he had chosen. That they that believe in him shall no longer die. But they shall live or resurrect. They shall be resurrected because of the oneness they had with him. I wish we could take a praise break right now and give God praise for being in one step with him. Being on one accord. But we need to start exercising today. The world needs to see our oneness with Christ. We need to open our mouth and begin to share the goodness of the good news of Christ and his word. And what he has established, what he has accomplished on the cross. Not only that, the authority that he has given unto you. You have some unbelievable power to be able to stand what you've been through. And you thought you did it on your own power. But it was the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you. So when Jesus was making this transition, praying his prayer, he was like, no, I'm coming home. He said, but they're still in the world. The listeners, disciples, the followers, you, still in this world. He said, I'm coming home to you, Holy Father. I'm coming back to the position that I was in in the beginning. And if I could see Jesus, you know, on the, on the day after the crucifixion, after he went to hell and preached the gospel and took the keys of death out of the grave, I could see him tagging in. When they was waiting, told them to wait on the Holy Spirit, I can see him and the Holy Spirit tagging. Oh, you know what? My job's done. I'm, hey, look, get up by my seat, Holy Spirit. It's your turn now. And I'm so glad that Jesus tagged in and didn't leave us alone. He didn't go home and say, this is it. It's over. They only own. But he said, I'm going to sing you another part of me. Good God Almighty. I'm going to sing you another part of me that's going to live on the inside of you. It's going to sleep with you. It's going to wake up with you. During trouble, it's going to be with you. I couldn't be everywhere at one time. The oneness, the oneness, the power. This is talking about the power of the oneness of God, the Father, the Son. I'm going a little bit far. We know St. John uh, was written by the Apostle John. Many say it was this other John, uh, John Evangelist, but we know We've got everything. I believe in my heart that it was John because nobody else can write the deity of God unless they had a, was an eyewitness. And we so wholeheartedly believe that John, according to some of the theologians and the writers, believe that uh, St. John wrote all of John, 1st and 2nd John, 3rd John, St. John, and the book of Revelation. We truly, we truly believe that. But the power, back to the power, John started out by talking about the deity of Christ. The deity of Christ, meaning the God, the similar, similarities of God, the divine being, the supreme being, the, uh, the creator of all things, the Godhead, the rank or the existing nature of God, the nature, the nature of God. Jesus was the only true God that came in human, human flesh. This is a core doctrine of the Christian faith, the deity of Christ. Yet they claim uh, of his deity by himself and his followers was rejected by the Jews. And this what led to the crucifixion of Christ. The deity of Christ shows us exactly the role that Jesus played, how he trusted, how he was in one step with the Father. And how he was able to accomplish going through some rough times. If you're going through rough times, I'm telling you right now, touch and agree with another believer. Touch and agree with your wife. Touch and agree with a, a, a co-worker that believes in you, a member, a church member. 
Call them up. Don't, don't play with somebody who don't believe that Jesus Christ can turn things around. Doesn't mean what you pray for, you'll get your answer. No, I want to be, I want to be honest. I want to be, I want to be transparent tonight. There's a lot of things in life you're going to pray for that you won't get. I'm so glad that uh, we have a pastor and pastors and men and women of God who teach the word of God, who understands the word of God, that even though we, we preach hope, even though we know there's hope in Jesus, even though we walk by faith and not by sight, there's still going to be some things that happen in your life that you wish, and you pray for, that you wish could happen, and God said, no, I'm, I'm sorry, that's not the plan that I have. So we, when we lose someone special to us or that job we want, or whatever it may be, whatever you've been sincerely praying for, interceding for, and you didn't get, it doesn't mean that God don't love you. It doesn't mean the prayer don't work. It doesn't mean that he didn't hear you. What it means is we have to learn as believers. We have to accept God's will. Yeah, there's consequences we pay for wrongdoing. Yes, understand that. But some things are just in God's plan. And God's plan. Let me go somewhere real quick. It's in, it's in God's plan. Somebody say God's plan. God's plan. I always say God's plan. I heard amen, baby. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. King James Version says, verse 8. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. It's written in this word once upon and unto man to die, and then the judgment. The thing is, a lot of times we hurt him, we really don't want to accept the truth. Because the word of God is truth. Remember, Holy Spirit came, he said, I come in truth, love and in truth. You make revealing truth, telling you the truth, what's really going on. That hey, hey, trouble's there, but you can put, pray for those that persecute you. We don't want to do the things that God has instructed us to do through his word, but we want a different result to happen. We spend a lot of time, I mentioned Sunday, we spend most of our time as believers telling the other believers how bad the world is and what the world's doing. And sometimes, most of the time, when we're living in a funk, we're not just tearing the world down, we're tearing other believers down. We telling other believers, talking bad about other believers. We putting them down and thinking Christ don't hear. Then you want to stand up in the pulpit or stand in front of somebody or you want to witness somebody on the street and you wonder why there was no, no change. Yes, God's word is powerful. Yes, it's anointed. You can say the name Jesus and call people to, to change or, uh, or to feel something. Yes. But what kind of influence would you have on somebody when you're not living anything? Then when you talk about one accord, I know exactly what I'm talking about with one accord. Because in unity, there is power. Power to be able to what? Make a change and make a difference. We ought to be able to say and live and represent Christ in such a way that somebody who might be embarrassed or might be ashamed to, to come around you and tell you what they're really going through would do like, uh, uh, excuse me, Nicodemus did. He, 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 he snuck and found Jesus in the midnight hour and said, tell me about the salvation. Jesus said, he must be born again. Nicodemus said, I enter a second time my mother's womb. said, no, 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 no. You must be born again. He was looking at it in the eye of human, human knowledge, human understanding. Christ was talking about the spirit. It's when it's bring power so you can see what God is revealing in these last days. 2 Corinthians um, chapter 2, verse 9. It talks about that God, but God had revealed it unto us, those deep things. We talked about that, those deep things, those secret things, those hidden things. The power of his cross, of the death, burial, and resurrection. Until we get a clear understanding of what Christ's death, burial, and resurrection represents, we really don't have any power. Because he didn't gain power over the enemy until the, the blood was shedded from Calvary's cross. The blood and every, he, 
Before he shed his blood, he had to fulfill every promise that was written in Scripture. Meaning obedience come with oneness. The plan of your blessing or to your next door being open come to the power of oneness. I'm excited about this class because believers need to get charged back up. We need to get right, we need to get our feet back planted on our on our on our walk with Christ, on our position in Christ, and on our assignment. Do you know what your excitement is of being a believer? First of all, the world ought to see that we're united with God's word. That we're listening, we're following, and understanding what Christ is taking, the direction he's taking us. What, what, what is he prophesying in our life? What is he foretelling in our life? What is he giving? What is he giving for us to give to the world? Like I said, united with Christ, we stand. Stand means you gotta fight. Stand means you gotta put the dukes up. You, you got to throw those punches. You got to put the time in. You got to work out. You got to condition yourself in the spirit. You feed your body so your body can be nourished and move on and be able to, and be able to uh, uh, adapt to the society or the assignment that we have. Like, what do you think you need to work? The world will build up your spirit. And I want to take this time out right now. I need y'all to hear me. Please, please hear what I'm saying. I, I'm so glad for this opportunity. I was able to preach Sunday, and um, I'm able to teach on Wednesday night. You know why? For that opportunity. I know, I know we can study on our own. I know we can read on our own. I do it. I know what I'm talking about. But when you're given an assignment, it made me get so deep in this word, the word of God began to blow my mind. And it, the word of God always blows my mind. But it should have blown my mind if, I, if I'd have been in it. Like I should have been in it. Instead of waiting on an assignment. I know what I'm talking about. I'm talking to you. Don't wait for those assignments. To get in God's word and trust it. You ought to stay in it. Because God is revealing the world to us and showing us all the devastation that's going on. Said, You're in this world. According to St. John chapter 17. He said, I went home. But you're still in it. And he said, Father, give the name that kept me. The oneness that we had. The unity that we had. Jesus was praying. You, you, you got to hear this. Jesus was praying. He said, Lord, glorify me. So I can carry out my son. So I can bring honor to you. And that you can honor me. I need both. Honor me. So I can honor you. Because they were one. They were in unity. They were in solidarity. Honor me so I can carry out. Glorify me so I can carry out this assignment. Yes, it's a heavy task. If you're talking about power. Power can be taken the wrong way. There's another type of power to lead to destruction. In Genesis chapter 11, uh, Nimrod. You know the story of Nimrod? Nimrod was the one that um, was building the tower to try to make it to heaven. Nimrod. Nimrod was a son of Cush. He was Noah's great grandson. He was a king in the land of Shinir. According to the Bible, he was a mighty, mighty hunter before the Lord. At one time, he was in tune with God. But sometimes our gift, our talent, and we don't put it in the master's hand, and we don't put it in the right place, sometimes our mind, the devil can come in and persuade us and convince us that we don't need God. So here he is. He had strength. He was a mighty man. He was able to do some extraordinary things with the bow and arrow. They said he was so mighty that he, this is what, this is what they said. This is what the uh, scripture talks about in uh, some studies of him. Outside of scripture said, he was so mighty that he would uh, shoot a bow into the heavens. And when the bow returned, it returned with blood. And he said it was the blood of angels. So that gave him a curiosity. That if I can reach heaven with this bow, I should be able to do something so I can go up there and sit with the gods. See how the devil can have you thinking so crazy? But wait a minute, before you discredit Nehemiah, I mean, excuse me, not Nehemiah, um, Nimrod, the Bible says, <laughs> in the book of Genesis, chapter 11, the Bible says, because the people were on one accord, here, here's what I'm talking about, because they were in tune and in step with one another. It's one of the moves God had to go down and see what was going on. Now, 
I'm not sure God came down to send angels down, but said God came down. And God seen that they were in unity with one with another. The enemy know how to unify. Why is the church struggling? Think about that for a moment. God who ordained, who, who, who everything that exists, God, God made, God created it. God is in charge. God knows all things. He sees all things. I'm omniscient, omnipresent. That's who he is. How, how, how come the world can adapt to the principles that God has laid for us? They follow these principles. We wonder why the rich stay rich. They don't even realize just how powerful God's principles is. That people who follow the principles will still get blessed. Now, they might not be the chosen ones of God. They might not be the ones that have a relationship with them. But they benefit. They benefit from being on one accord, following the orders and the rules and the laws of God. Deuteronomy 28 said, You diligently hearken unto the, the, the voice of the Lord and follow my commandments, my statute, my instruction. He gave a list of the blessings. But he said, If you don't, it gave a list of the curses. It gave a list of the curses. I don't know about y'all, but I want to stand in solidarity with Christ. I want to be unified with him. I want to represent him. And I want him to represent me. Do you know we can do the same thing Christ did that prayer? He prayed unto the Father and said, Father, glorify me right now. When you're going through your struggles, when you, you, you got to go through some doors that may seem a little rough, and the whole world is against you. You're back up against the wall. Do you know you can get down on your knees and say, Father, in the name of Jesus? Because you say, if I ask anything in your son's name, I should have it. With all sincerity, trusting in his word, being in one accord with his word. Say, Lord, give me the strength. Glorify me right now so I can glorify you. Lord, if you honor me right now, I can honor you. But I want to let the church know, I want to let the body of believers know, God has been honoring us ever since his death, burial, and resurrection. Now is the time for us to get on one accord and to honor him. The power, the power, the power. Power of his love. St. John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5 talks about in him there's life in Christ there's light in the beginning was the word it leads into that in him is life and light and then verse 10 we drop down to verse 10 it talks about it says this first John St. John chapter 1 verse 10 he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not It's too many believers on the face of this earth for most of the world still not to know him. Matthew chapter 24, I know it talks about wars and wounds of wars kind of give us a list. He said, but the end is not yet. He said, the end is not coming to the gospel. It's preached, four corners of we, 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 If we want to be able to be in one step with God, we want to be in unity with God. We want the rewards of God, the benefits to come on. And we want to know our purpose in God, which we're going to be talking about next week. If we want to know those things, we got to accept him at his word and realize that we have an assignment. We have a mandate. We have an obligation to be able to live, teach, and preach his word. Too many times we let the enemy fool us Every little mistake you make, every time you trip up and you do something, you fall back in sin, you don't realize that Christ, the power of his death, burial, and resurrection, and if you truly believe in him, you don't have to keep going back and get saved all over again. All you do have to, have to do is repent because of the power. I, I know where I'm going, the power. Power is, is, is mind-blowing. How, how can his death cover that much? Because he was God. It was in the mind of God in the beginning, the plan that he had for you. He had already worked it out. That's why we need to run and rejoice in victory because of what he's done. If you truly accept the victory and the price that Christ paid for you, if you accept everything he's done, truly, you wouldn't worry about anything. 
I tell this story all the time. I know it. I know you probably get tired of hearing it. But I have to say it. I remember when I was off work years ago. Hurt my back. I was off for two years, one year, and then went back to work, and I was off again. And the, the bills were piling up. You know, things, you know how it is. Before you know it, you know, you live check for check. Before you know it, you're in debt. I felt less than a man. I'm the man of the house. This, this, this shouldn't be happening. I'm sitting there whining, saving, whining. A believer in whining. I'm listening to a TV evangelist saying, praise God in the middle of a storm. I didn't even want to hear it for that. And he, he, send me some money. That's, send, send me some money. You know how you work? Send me some, you know, what I'm talking back to the TV, but in my heart, I'm a man of God. And God said, what, what, what are you mad for? Look around. I'm keeping you. You're still eating. Still got food on the table. Still got a roof over your head. When things go bad, we forget that God is still holding us together and God is already making an escape. I don't want to take it out of context, but God is always making escapes for us, a way out. But we give up too soon because we're not in one step with God. We're not in unity. We're united. We need to be united. I'm talking to believers. We need to be united in Christ. United in Christ we stand. And I remember after whining, I said, you know what? Let me try this. Let me try to give God praise. Let me try to give the Lord praise in the middle of my storm. And I told you, there's power in his name. You say that name one too many times, I don't, I don't care what kind of condition you're in. I was in a bad state in my mind, in my body, in, in, my atmosphere, in the atmosphere. It was all jacked up. But I began to say the name Jesus. And I kid you not, I began to slip up my hand. Not feeling it at first. But all of a sudden, the higher my hands got, the more I felt his presence. And God was letting me know he was there all along. That he had never left me. But all I had to do was tap into him. Because his finished work was already done. I had to, I had to accept his finished work. And know that he had already made a way for me. He already made a way for you. I had to get in tune with him. I had to get my steps together. And once I did that, I felt, I felt, I felt God's presence. I can say that I haven't really felt God's presence like that. I can count on two hands how many times I've felt it. But this time, it was a demonic feeling. You know, I know when a demonic feeling is in my house around me. I know what it feels like. But this was the presence of the Lord. Because I wanted to stay, and I was still afraid. And I fell to the ground as if I was dead. And I, I can feel him. Listen to me. I can feel God picking me up off the ground. Say, I was a God that was dead, but yet he lived. I'm the one that opened up the blind eye. I'm the one that departed the Red Sea. And as I was, he was lifting me up, I was, was repenting from the inside out. I went crying just with tears. I was weeping from the inside out, saying, Lord, forgive me for doubting you. Forgive me for, get, forgive me for getting out of step. I should have trusted you all along. And he said these words to me that I would never forget. He said, if you truly knew who I am, hear me, saints of God. If we truly know who he is and his power, the power of his resurrection. Paul said, that's why I preach. I preach the crucified one. The resurrected Savior. The one that death could hold. The grave could hold him. He still had the power to get up. And guess what? He said, no man, let it, let it take my life. I lay it down. And I got the power. To, that's power. That's what I'm asking you as believers to connect with that type of power. That type of anointing. He said these words. If you really knew, I'm talking to somebody tonight. If you really knew who I am, God is saying this to you. You wouldn't worry about nothing. Cancer. Death, COVID, uh, you name it, diabetes, broken leg, broken body, a tr blood transfusion, heart, heart transplant, kidney. I, if you knew who I was, the creator of all things, the one in the book of St. John chapter 7 is one with Christ. He said, I'm leaving, going home to go to my father. He said, but Lord, 
leave them with a name just like you let them kept me. You gave me them, keep them. Keep them in your name. And he said, let them be one as me and you are one. God was, Jesus was speaking to his father, saying, Lord, I know the only thing that only can keep my people, and it's that if we learn how to be on one accord. One accord. Verse 10 says, and in this world, but the world made, the world knew me not. Verse 11, and he came unto his own, and his own received him not. A question was asked, I was at um, work today, and one of the co-workers asked me a question. He said, we were talking about the Lord. He said, after all that they've seen, they've seen the stuff that Jesus did, how can they still doubt it? And I said, you hear today they talk about uh, conspiracy theories and, you know, how uh, evolution versus, the, you know, how the Bible began, you know. You got people out there that have been programmed by the enemy that has their own story or belief system. And because they refuse to accept and be in one step with God or one step with Christ, they're out of step. And they can't receive the things of God. Even though Jesus was able to lay hand on somebody sick and they see the dead raised. When Lazarus said, can you have, when he was in hell, he said, can you, so don't Lazarus, excuse me, the rich man told Lazarus, can you go dip your finger in water and bring me some food? Or can you go warn me, warn my brothers about this horrible place? He said, the, the scriptures have been written. He said, my prophets out there didn't believe, you didn't believe them. If they came back from the dead, you wouldn't even believe them. This world is so blind. And when we are not in one accord and one step with God, we're causing them not only to be blind, we're causing them to be crippled. We have the authority as believers to be able to take the bondage and to help take the scales off the eyes because we have been empowered. We have been empowered. I say it again. We have been empowered. We have been given the power and authority to be able to tread over serpents. We're able to go some places where God will protect us. I'm not telling you to be a superman. You better use some wisdom with that. Not your own wisdom, and use the wisdom of God. Don't go where God didn't tell you to go. I say that again. Don't go where God didn't tell you to go. Don't get so holy and down that you just run out there and lay your hands on anybody. You better make sure you got led. But one thing you ought to be here doing, you ought to have a testimony. Paul said, I was the chief of sinners. I was the worst of the worst until I met Jesus. Until I met Jesus. Paul said, when I met Jesus, he changed my name. I was Saul, but he changed it into Paul. And now we're in one step. we in unity, one with another. Oh, this is some good stuff, y'all. I don't know about y'all. It's good to me. Verse 13. Which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Born of God, not of the will of flesh, not of the will of man, but God. Look at the power beyond imagination. That's some power beyond imagination. His own didn't receive him. He said, I didn't come, I didn't send you, I didn't send you with no flesh and blood, or your flesh, or the will of man, but the will of God. Verse 14, it said, and the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Here's Jesus. The Word became flesh and lived among us. The unity. God sent His Son. He was an example for us. He paved the way for us. Now that they were in step, we, we jump over to verse 17. Glorify me. That I might glorify you. Everyone that you gave me, I kept them. I kept them. I didn't lose not one that you gave me. Jesus carried out His assignment. There's a family, there's some children in your life, grandchildren. There's some babies in your life that God said, you have an assignment to live holy in front of them. I'm giving them to you, and I don't expect you to lose any one of them. Long you stay in one accord with me, my son, and the Holy Spirit. We can pray. We can intercede. That's what Jesus was doing. He was interceding on behalf of not just his disciples, not just the followers in that time, but Jesus' prayer was so powerful. Talking about the power. 
the power, it comes and travels from generation to generation. God knew exactly what he was doing when he was making, having his prayer, his high priest prayer. He knew he was a high priest. He knew he the one can. He said, when he went to Lazarus' tomb, he said, Lord, when I pray, every time I ask you for anything, you give me what I need. Remember, you had all the people where he said, what is he going to do? Is he going to raise this? He's been stinking in that cave. The stone. He said, the Jews said, roll the stone away. Move it. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Power. Because he, he got in step with the Father. He united in one with his Father, and he prayed. And he said, Lord, every time I pray. But Jesus said at that time, his prayer was saying, Lord, don't do it for me. Do it for the ones that watch. Do it for those doubters. I'm talking to the doubters now who might be sitting in church clothes and uh, sitting on the church pews and you might be in part of a ministry and you still doubt the power, the power and the love of God. If you can't see the demonstration of God's love keeping us in all this chaos that's going on in the world, this injustice, this racism, this deep deep-rooted hatred. All the wrongdoings you see in there, political on down to the, you name it, is corrupt. God has been keeping us and protecting us through this COVID. If, if you're still here and you made it through all of that, you need to put your iPad down, you need to put your, your phone down right now, and you should be, you need to be shouting around your house right now, giving God praise, because he kept me. Yes, he did. He kept you. He's still keeping you. I, I don't know. I feel like shouting right now. The more I talk about it, the more excited I get about it. Because, you know, when you stand up before people, sometimes you're worried, you're twisted. I don't know. But, but the, the Lord said, you go. If I sing you, you go. He said, I'll make provision for you. I'll make sure people understand exactly what you're trying to say. So now I don't have that fear anymore of standing before people and talking about the goodness of the Lord. I, I take it, I wear that a badge of honor. It's an honor to be able to stand before you right now and to be able to share God's goodness because there is power in the oneness of Christ. In the days that we live in, we need unity. The church needs to be unified. We need to be so unified when we pray, things happen. Things change. The unsaved begin to look towards God. I don't care if you name an unsaved person out there, you name an unruly person out there, if you look at every person of importance in the Bible, they can fit in that category. Christ said he had no respect of person. What he done for one, he had to do it for others. But he gave us as believers the access to work together in unity, to be able to pray on one accord, touching and agreeing, not down in our heart, trusting and depending on him, and he said it would come to pass. Imagine what would happen if we unified ourselves. I believe the reason why a lot of miracles are not happening today, God still does miracles. We know it every single day. But I believe right, the reason why, because we, our spirit had got tainted and contaminated because so many prayers we prayed didn't come to pass. But imagine we begin to unify ourselves together in all sincerity, not just because somebody told us to unify, but because the word of God instructs us to. Jesus being the high priest spoke these things. He said, he raised his eyes towards heaven and prayed, said, Father, my hour has come. Your hour is coming where you have to give account. A lot of people say we, we live in the last days. Uh, the world's coming to an end. But in my closing, my father used to say, my father was a pastor. I remember after every closing message, he would say, tomorrow is not promised. There's no promise for tomorrow. You might be burying somebody today, and you can be getting buried the next day. He said, tomorrow the sun might be shining on your grave. You don't have time to wait. And I know without a shadow of doubt, the Lord gave me this message of oneness. I have then begun to tap in to the oneness, how we unite ourselves with Christ and the layout that God gave us that we should be doing, how we carry out our assignments. But don't wait. Don't let the enemy convince you that there's time, that you have time, because you don't. The Lord is going to come back. But it don't have to be when the sky cracked or when the, 
uh, a rapture comes. It can be when the Lord calls your name and says, it's time for you to come home. If you can evaluate yourself right now, talk about the oneness. Are you in step with him? Are you in tune with him? Are you being obedient to his word and what he has given you, your assignment? And if you have it, you need to take time out right now to make sure you do that. You need to know that the God we serve, you need to know the power that he possessed, and he just didn't do it for himself. He shared that with us. He said the same power. He said greater works that you can do than he did. Now, I don't want to be able to do no great works with the wrong attitude or wrong motive. If I do anything I'm going to glorify God, I want to make sure I'm doing it in the right spirit. And it won't come to pass if I don't do it in the right spirit. So I pray with you tonight as I close that you tune in next week. Come back with us as we talk about the purpose of being on one accord. What is our purpose? What is our assignment for being on one accord? As you come back next week, you will truly be blessed. But in our closing, examine yourself tonight. Don't, don't lay your head on your bed tonight without saying, Lord, create in me. Go like David did. Create in me, Lord, a clean heart. And renew in me a right spirit. Why? Because I need it, Lord. I know my family would be better if I'm on one court with you. United with you, Christ. He sent you for us. And Lord, now you send us for them. Prepare us. Create me a clean heart so when I speak, they can feel me. Uh, create a, me a clean heart for when I uh, make a step or make a move or, or the life that I live will speak for me and bring glory to you, God. Father God, right now, we thank you for the word. We thank you for those that are listening. I pray that this word makes sense to somebody. Lord, even though sometimes we get a little confused and nervous, Lord, but I thank you, Lord, that you gave me anointing to be able to destroy the, yoke, the heavy yoke of bondage and a burden. Because you say where there's, where there's joy, there's liberty, there's peace. Where the word is, there's liberty. To set the captives free. You said you came, your word was sent to open up the blind eyes. It was able to cause the lame to walk. It was able to unloose the chains and the shackle of those that are in bondage. And I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. But Lord, empower your people to step together in unity in the oneness of Christ. That, Lord, we may pull up, stand up that bloodstained banner. And hold it up for you. Said the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross is not in vain, but it's flowing through my blood. And I speak it, and I want to live it. I want to be example for the world in these last days. So, Lord, we thank you in advance. And Lord, until we meet again, Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I enjoyed you tonight. Looking forward to you next week. Please come back and share with us. Tell somebody about it that catches on Facebook Live and YouTube. God bless you.